Hey man, what's going on? Have you ever heard of Area Fifty One? Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> don't do this to me. I don't want to do it. It's what I had prepared. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, uh, thank goodness. Have you ever heard of Steve Glue? Yeah, it's gonna be worse. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> oh man. I feel like I would, if I ever. Yeah. <laughs> You should do one of those TikTok videos where you hold up two options and I get to choose one. You know, <laughs> which one do you want? to Yeah, do? but they're both bad. They're both aliens. Is Steve Glue aliens? Uh, All right, roll it. Oh yeah, this is companies for the whole world. We'd like to have our own. Can I open for you, please? Let me open and do that. But don't <laughs> intro it. Let Ladies just- and gentlemen. <laughs> Tim Stone. She spent her whole life <laughs> working on that project for you to diss it in front of the whole family like that. You're going to ruin Homeward Bound. <laughs> Things I learned last night. Tilling it, tilling it. Who's Steve Glue? Okay, so Steve Glue uh, was a dude in. You know his dad. Man. <laughs> Elmer, Elmer, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking. About. <laughs> okay, Steve yeah. Glue did what? Uh, Steve Glue was a man in the '90s who had a passion. Uh, um, he was a collector of um, uh, <laughs> of candy dispensers known as Pez. Um, okay, uh, not as weird as I. Th- well, it's still weird. But uh, not as weird as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Are these the seven dwarves? What is this? These are the four horsemen of the Pezocalypse. <laughs> the Santa Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this series is. This is just a random collection of Pez products. They all which got they are all the same. I didn't. They're not all the same. There's two that are very distinctly different. I mean, they're different, but they're the same. You know, it's all bearded dudes with hats. Okay. Um, they're just different color beards and color faces. And this color guy is a Pez everything. collector. Yeah, he's a Pez collector. But here's the deal: Pez it's, candy, not great. It's chalk. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not chalk. It's candy. Are you serious? But it's not like chalk. I mean, I used to cut up chalk and shape it. And that's shape what I was and saying. You know that you're an idiot for that, right? <laughs> okay, so he's a Pez collector. I used to just stick whole sticks of chalk in there. He's a Pez head. I thought it was the, the Pez <laughs> cut the chalk into the shape. And so you put the whole stick in, and then you. You got the shape. Okay, you were eating chalk as a kid. That's what you're saying. Because <laughs> that, that I, thought, honestly, I thought we all were. I thought honestly, explains a lot. I thought we all were. It's okay. Pez. Yeah, That's yeah, what Pez yeah. is. Yeah. 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 So he collects <laughs> Pez dispensers. <laughs> How many has he got? Oh, he's got lots. He's got lots of Pez dispensers. That's not the really interesting thing about his life, though. That's just a side thing. <laughs> one night, one night he's abducted <laughs> by aliens. I swear, to, I swear, if you say something like that, if you lead me on with a Pez collection, and then you go one night late in the three in the morning, a bright light shines into his bedroom, shineth upon the Pez collectors. <laughs> they all begin to tremble and shake. As a flying saucer overtakes his home, what are you talking about? So he was a Pez collector, uh, and he was from Dewitt, Michigan. Okay. Uh, and here's something we need to note right off the bat about Pez: their corporate structure is a little strange. Okay. So there's two Pez companies. There's how old is Pez? Uh, Pez is old. Um, Pez, as we know it, 1949, something like that. Okay. Uh, before that, it was actually an anti-smoking tool. Um, and so it was like it was like <laughs> Nicorette gum like was the concept, but they realized oh hey, it's a little like uh, people are opening up this tin and they're picking it up and putting it in their mouth. That's too much work. Let's make it fun and so they had a German designer design this dispenser that could give you one at a time like really quickly and they thought oh this cigarette smokers are going to love this, um, but then kids loved it uh, <laughs> and they're like well, we can't and have like, kids. Well, Wait, I mean, we got to get the kids smoking first, <laughs> and then give them. And that feels like bad messaging, you know. So they turned like, it, hey, yeah, you try to get into smoking. <laughs> so they turned it into candy and started marketing. It I as dare candy. you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a different kind of dare yeah, program. We dare you, and then we've got a program for and you. We got to get to high school. Dare you. Um, uh, no, yeah, they they were like, oh, this will market really well as candy. We put some characters on it. 
it'll sell well. And so that's kind of how Pez got started. Okay. Um, but it still works for smoking if you eat it that way because uh, it's just chalk. <laughs> <laughs> kills you. That's um, how I quit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just ate a bunch of chalk. <laughs> I used to carry around cartons of cigarettes, but it was just full of chalk, just little chalk sticks. That's also what the fake <laughs> cigarettes are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. And then you puff them. Yeah, that's right. That's what I was eating. I was like, I eat cigarettes too, guys. <laughs> That's the crunchiest cigarette I've ever seen someone bite. I just ate a whole I've also pack. Never seen someone bite into a cigarette, but that was the crunchiest cigarette I've ever seen someone bite into. Yeah, <laughs> you don't try to light it. It does not. Doesn't it doesn't burn the well. same. It doesn't burn. Yeah. So, um, is so the corporate structure of Kay. Pez was there was Pez International, which was the parent company, and that operated. Yeah, who's the Pez Daddy? That <laughs> who's <laughs> that operated? Who's worldwide. the Pez Papa? Who's in charge? <laughs> that you know operated what I'm worldwide. Who's right? the president? But America had their own. America had Pez America because you know we're Americans. Corporate. That's how we are. Uh, <laughs> We were like, oh yeah, this is companies for the whole world. We'd like to have our own. Yeah, uh, and so there was Pez America, um, and the way things functioned was, uh, <laughs> I hate so much that you called this, but the president and CEO of Pez in the '90s called himself the president. Yeah, he did. <laughs> his name. You got it. His name was Scott McWeeny. Uh, that's not a joke. <laughs> joke. <laughs> A joke. <laughs> this is him, Scott McWeenie, the president. He looks so serious about this too. <laughs> oh, he was passionate about it. Um, <clears throat> here's an earlier photo of Scott McWeenie. I think this is in. Like yeah, the that's before. 80s. No, so the the other. Go back to the other picture. This hey, look how the toll that the stress of this job is taking. Yeah, this on is this a man. tough job. Go back to the earlier picture. Yeah, this is when he first this became the president. president. Yeah, this is president, right? Yeah, and this is this is third pes- term pessimistic. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like he he aged quite a bit here. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Um but also didn't, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty accurate. Okay. Actually. So he's the president. Um and he I do like that I called that. That's very funny. I hate that so much. Um he They call all their frontline workers peasants, so <laughs> it's <laughs> It's not as endearing as they thought it was going to be. Yeah, they thought it'd be a cute, fun thing. Ah, peasants. Retention's terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> They're cloning their workers. <laughs> <laughs> you walk into a call center. It's your first day on the job. And they've already got one of you, you walk- somehow. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. Hold on. You walk in. You walk in and someone goes, Eddie? <laughs> Yeah, like, what are you talking? Why are you calling me Excuse Eddie? Excuse me. Oh, n- nothing. Nothing. Now you walk in, and the first row is all like the new people. Yeah. And so they're all different. The second row is different. Also them. <laughs> but yeah, you like the second row, and you meet Becky in the first row. Yeah. And then you you get up after your first few calls, your training you calls, whatever. Becca. You go to the restroom, and you start to notice. You're like, there's, it's all Becky. <laughs> A hundred Beckys. <laughs> and they all talk to you. It's Beckys. Answering the same call. It's a, you're on the other side of the line and you just hear that echo. It sounds like you're talking hello, to an army. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Thank you for calling Pez. Pez I'm Pez, one of the peasants. Pez. So, so, so why is this guy interesting to me? McWeenie, he ran this company. <laughs> it was a tight ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it was a tight ship. He ran a lean. Did really, McDonald's lean, ever try to do ship. hot dogs? <laughs> 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 Did they? Uh, well, let's find out. I don't know. McDonald's what are the new McWeeny hot dogs? That guarantee they did. Uh, they call it the Mick hot dog, uh, which is a a miss, um, and it is. It looks pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. It's one of the worst looking hot dogs I've ever seen. Really? It's a bad looking. I hot don't know. Dog. I've never seen a hot dog. I wouldn't eat. <laughs> Let me so show you a picture of this. <laughs> <laughs> this Mick hot dog. It's not a surprise that this ain't around no more because this is rough. Good branding though. Oh. Oh, hey, it looks like it was uh, in Japan. Maybe I'm not sure. I can't read that. 
but what do we think's assuming. on the top of the hot dog? I think it's relish, but it's just you know like why a bad this didn't color? take off in America. The whole grain bun. That's what I'm saying. You know, Americans yeah, see through bun. that. It's it's some they go, weird hey, relish don't try thing. to sneak some health into yeah, this. Yeah, all make right? this worse for me. If I'm going somewhere and getting a McWeenie, yeah, I want it to. <laughs> I want this McWeenie to make kill me. <laughs> so Scott McWeenie. So Scott McWeenie, he ran a very tight ship, and he he was uh, he wanted to make all the decisions. He sure. wanted to make the call and hit a home run and be right. He wanted to be the guy. Yeah, yeah, and so he would find these licensing deals with big American brands and they would license their new Pez their character. characters. Yeah. Meanwhile, Pez International is out here making their own licensing deals that are globally interesting, right? And they're sending it off to Pez American and being like, hey, we got this new licensing de- licensing deal. We'll ship it off to the US and he and McWeeny's like that wasn't nope. Not That's not going to sell here. We're not selling that here. And so he had to sign off on everything that Pez America or Pez Global brought in because he wanted to be the guy. He wanted to be the situation. That's the only reason and he'd be like he'd be like no you guys are ignorant. That'll never work here. He's like you guys don't know what's what works in the States. He's like I know what works in the States. You don't know what works in the States. I'm here. I'm the president. I'm boots on the ground. Yeah, yeah. I'm the president. You're the new world order. We're not (laughs) we're not part of each other. (laughs) Yeah, the UN doesn't get to tell me what to do. (laughs) Yeah, 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 and so there were a lot of series in the McWeeny era of Pez characters that never sold in the U.S. and okay. were not uh, available. Uh, what's the word? Um, Good. Not legal to sell in the U.S. because sure. there was no license for the U.S. to sell them. So you could, if you were a serious collector, go overseas, find someone who had it, purchase it, come home, whatever. But you could not sell it. In the U.S., because there was no licenses available for it. Interesting. In the U.S. Um, and this is where Steve Glue came into the yeah. picture. Steve Glue, um, he noticed that there's this weird little law with customs, where if you own a business and that imports goods from overseas, if you want to uh, stop that product from being imported into your nation, if you have the license for it, you're allowed to prevent that. You just have to file the paperwork with customs. But if you don't, people who don't have the license can import it. And it's legal, perfectly legal to bring that, to import that. If they purchase it overseas, they sure. can import it in. Technically speaking, what happens after that? If you sell it, if you don't have the license, it's probably illegal. But importing is legal. Okay. And Pez. So that. did you they just say the that. same thing three times? I don't understand what happened. So he can go somewhere, buy it, come back, but he still can't sell it in the states. Yeah, so he's allowed to import it, but customs, I like that you said it a very simple way the first time, and then you said it a unnecessarily complicated way. Well, you looked time. at me like you didn't understand. So no, I, I looked tried at you to like I was it. fully on board. You looked like, at me like you looked at me like so I don't understand he, what he can saying. go somewhere. So I was like, oh, I he can go to different. Europe. Yeah, he can buy it. He can buy. It. He can come back to the states. Yeah, and then he can't sell it in the states because yes. he doesn't have the license. Yes. No, I fully understood that. And then you were like, now there's some weird laws with the customs, and it all comes down to paperwork. And if they don't fill out the paperwork, well, then no, they, no, no, no. Okay, okay. Let me explain that because clearly you don't understand. I know if if you don't have the license to sell something in the US, you can't import it and customs will stop you and say you're not allowed to sell this in the US as long as the company that has the license files that paperwork with customs. Otherwise, you so can he's trusting that Pez say, International didn't do the paperwork. Yeah, so he can sell it in the States. <clears throat> he can't sell it, but he can import it. Okay. Yeah, and so he knows. Okay, I can at least get past customs and from there it's easy. Um, so <laughs> he goes, but, but what customs <clears throat> agent? What? What are you talking about? What custom agent? Uh, agent is going through your bag, sees some Pez dispensers, and is like, "These aren't licensed in the United <laughs> These States. Are not you can't. Pez I know what is licensed <laughs> and what isn't licensed, and I'm going to go ahead and stop you right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what? What custom agent is so brushed up <laughs> on his Pez collection and Pez availability? That's a decent point. I'm saying, like, That's you know, a decent like point. the shot of that person knowing what's licensed and what's not. 
<laughs> when it comes to Pez dispensers. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a pretty decent point, <laughs> but I mean, I think I think the the idea. But he is- was like, "Oh boy, I don't want to get caught," <laughs> and he's like nervous in line too. He's got his backpack full of Pez dispensers. He's freaking sweating. He's, shaking, you he's can looking around all the Pez. You know what year is this? Late nineties. And he's like, "Okay," he gets the customs. He's like, "All right," he's like, "Can you open your bag, please?" Yeah, it's it's just Pez dispensers. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. All right, man. You got any illegal drugs or bombs in here? No. <laughs> no. Just no. Oh no, god. No, 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 oh no. god. Just no. Fully legal just Pez dispensers. <laughs> totally legal Pez's. Whole licensed <laughs> and insured. These are the legalist Pez's you've ever seen. These are the these are the legit <laughs> legit Pez's. Such legal Pez. Okay. <laughs> the guy's like, I don't want to die for this. Get out go. of my mind. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, how how does he think the interaction is going to go? Well, I think he's going to get tased. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I think what he's saying. I think he's saying that he's expecting. He's to not going to go enough. through all the. Oh, where they would they say, gonna flag him. "Oh, we need to look at." They're gonna be like, this. "Hey, why there's do you have two thousand Pez, Pez dispensers?" Yeah, there's a lot of Pez stuff. Okay, so that's fishy. Hey, I wanted to give you a heads up that our Tillin patron hangout is happening on June 29th at 6 30 p.m. By the time that happens, I'll be a married man. So I'm taking time away from my beautiful wife to come hang out with our $20 patron supporters. So maybe like, you know, be thankful. Okay, is what I'm saying. Um, but for real, uh, we're very thankful for our patron supporters because without you, the show doesn't happen. So uh, every month we do a hangout for a twenty dollar tier, and the next one is on June twenty ninth at six thirty. Come hang out with Tim and married me. You know, it's gonna be great. Um, so him and his son they fly to Europe. Sure. Um, and uh, they land. Uh, in Germany near a major Pez dispenser manufacturing plant. They just hang around outside for a while. Just kind of hoping for the leftovers <laughs> like you do at Krispy Kreme. You know what I'm saying? Because they throw away. Do you yeah. know the Krispy Kreme throws away yeah, the they're... slightly deformed donuts? Yeah, and they can't. Fat, <laughs> fat Jaren would give you a lot of tips on how to get some free donuts. Legally, legally, they can't stop you if you take it out of the dumpster. That legally, is true. They are not allowed to say no. The police legally yeah, are. But if but you can't Krispy get a bag, if you can't get a bag of Krispy Kreme donuts out of the trash and away from there faster than the police arrive, yeah. that's on you. Yeah, that's on you. And that's, that's where I knew you. I needed to lose weight. But what? What? <laughs> So, <laughs> but the thing is, Krispy Kreme being a Dota shop, it's crawling with the cops. Yeah, uh, so you have to be sneaky. You we love stereotypes. <laughs> it's like a, it's like it's like that Burger King video game. You have to sneak into the Krispy Kreme to get your trash donut for free. This is a. <laughs> it's really like a dollar eighty. This is a Krispy Kreme heist. <laughs> You're risking years in prison. Over a Krispy Kreme donut. Over over a deformed donut. Hey, speaking of prison, we have a friend. Oh, we uh, do. In, we do in prison. Yeah. Uh, Malisha. Malisha wrote us a letter. Yes, um, we read so it. So we did read it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm I'm legally required to say I read it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Malisha, if you're still listening to this, yeah, you know, um, sorry about all the other prison jokes we made in previous episodes. <laughs> About how much prison time we would do in exchange for, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for thanks, thanks for, for your listening. letter. That was really yeah, that was, was really, really kind nice. and uplifting. Yeah, that was really nice. We loved it. Um, we're gonna write you a letter. You yeah. probably got it by now. And honestly. for other listeners, sh- uh, she said that she's sharing it with all her friends in the prison, which is more than you're doing. You yeah. sacks of crap. Yeah, tell your friends How dare about you? us. You know? Yeah, she's got a whole prison unit. I think she said the Dylan words fans down there. <laughs> I think she said the words. I promise I didn't start a cult. And so the fact that none of you have started, a you cult. can't be bothered to leave a five star review. <laughs> Anyways. So anyway, thanks, Felicia. Jaren's might is we're my really light. sorry if we were mispronounced your name. By the way, Jaren's we debated it. Might is my Jaren's light. light is my might. Gosh dang it, Jaren's light is my might. Oh man. So anyway, everybody say that out loud. No matter where you're listening right now, Jaren's light is my might. How spooky would it be <laughs> if she's in that prison cell and the whole prison right now they all <laughs> the happen to be listening time. at the same time? How spooky would it be? You're at I don't know. 
old navy. <laughs> and, oh yeah. And you're like you're like looking at a new pair of jeans and you just hear from the changing room across right. the store. <laughs> How, who's listening to the podcast in the changing room? Who's got headphones in while they're trying on new clothes? Tim? They can't interrupt this. What if you're at Pez headquarters and a hundred Becky's Pez go Cheers line? <laughs> The Pez Palace. <laughs> the they Pez Palace. I like Pez Quarters. So, okay. um, <laughs> so he and his son go to Germany. They're hanging yeah. out around a Pez dispensary. Yeah, they go. <laughs> <laughs> a Pez, Pez dispensary. Dispenser dispensary. <laughs> Okay, first of all, why are there not storefronts called dispensaries that sell Pez dispensers? Pez dispensers. That's is Pez still a thing? Can you still go buy Pez just publicly? Yeah, but this is not licensed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to take it to the DMV the second you drop it off the lot. You can't sell it. <laughs> so, so he goes. He goes. He starts hanging around these factories. Makes a connection. Um, finds a guy who's a collector overseas. What do you mean makes a connection. Yeah, you know how these things. What's well, he just hanging outside the factory? He's like, hey, you, can I buy you lunch? Yeah. You know, well, the guy's like, okay. He he finds a guy in Europe who knows a lot about Pez and is sure. like a, an avid collector. Yeah, like a collector, you know, like a collector. Sure. And he's a collector, and so he's like, they bond over being collectors. Um, and the guy's like, hey, I've got some some global Pez, not some American Pez. You want sure. some global Pez? And he's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, how much? Um, and he's like, twelve hundred dollars. Uh, what are they doing this? Why are you talking like they're doing this behind a circle K? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> You're just like, hey, I got some global Pez. I got some global Pez. Yeah, they're just doing shady deals behind the circle K. Yeah, and so he buys he buys a handful of rare global Pezes. Okay, and he takes that back and he turns them for a massive profit, like a thousand dollars profit each Pez. Um, Who? Okay. There's because here's the deal: you couldn't get those in the states. Man, if you were stateside. I'm be honest with you right now. If I came home <laughs> and my wife, who, by the way, if you're listening to this, I'm married. Uh, I'm not married yet when we're yeah. recording this, so that's why I keep that's saying a gamble. It. It's a gamble. It's Hopefully gonna it pays off. You know, I'm gonna. It's you know, for the next probably ten episodes, I'm gonna mention it just so you guys know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I come home and my wife is yeah. like, "Hey, so." I saw an opportunity, couldn't <laughs> pass it up, and I spent an extra thousand dollars this month. Yeah, and I'd be like, "Oh, okay. I mean, that's that's a a, that's big, a big swing budget item, sure." Yeah. Um, what did you get? And she goes, <laughs> <laughs> "It's this. It's, <laughs> it's super rare. It's super rare. It's only available globally. This is the only one in the United States." Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's the queen. <laughs> oh, you went with the queen. I was gonna go Tony the Tiger. <laughs> it's available everywhere, Ray. <laughs> but look, it's. But look, when I. Hello. <laughs> she did that. It wasn't me. <laughs> Hello. That's two pieces each time. Too. It's two syllables. Hello. <laughs> She's shooting Pez all over the carpet, trying to show you this. Oh, you're pezzing everywhere, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I was so pezzed when I saw that. <laughs> I thought that I was I was working through all the all the Pez puns I could make, and pezzed <laughs> off was one I was gonna work toward. So pezzed off. I did say the real word the other night during a show, <laughs> and did the crowd gasp? <gasps> almost. It was definitely it was a ladies' event, and <gasps> it came out my mouth. And you know, have you ever said something, and as it's coming out of your mouth, you're like. Oh, no, like, oh, I should have said that one. I know it. Yeah, mm, that's okay. Anyway. They're fine. Yeah, I sold him a lot of Pez dispensers after <laughs> global ones, even. Um, so he made a big profit, and he said, and "You got a glass oh. case, or you're like, here's my Pez." Imagine. Okay, let's walk through another scenario. <laughs> uh, you're rich, right? <laughs> Divorced, obviously, and you're going out obviously. trying to date again. You're trying to impress some young ladies, right? So you bring, you throw a party at your house. And you're like, you want to show off how rich you are. Yeah. So you go, hey, ladies, you guys want to see my expensive collection? And they think diamonds. They diamonds, think riches, watches, cars, treasures, swords. And from you lead them to your garage. Yeah. That is lined wall to wall with cases. Yeah. And it's just well lit, by the way. They're always so well lit. So well lit. So Pez well lit. dispensers yeah. everywhere. Marble floors. And you know what's crazy is that you have their faces on Pez dispensers. <laughs> You 
That's this, like a peel movie. This one's you. <laughs> Are you in Pezzed? <laughs> Impressed? In, in, in Pezzed? <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> creepy gosh. I hate that so much. Um, yeah, so he he makes he turns this for a profit. Yeah, and so he turns to his wife and he says this is our life now. <laughs> he says this is what I need to do. I just quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> she said, what I just quit my job. <laughs> well, he didn't quit his job yet, but he did go back um, and he met some influential people in the Pez world overseas um, like Pez global corporate. Yeah, um, Allegedly. Now, here's where the story gets a little difficult. According to the people at corporate at Pez Global, this isn't true. They were just friends. Sure. According to Steve Glue, they were his suppliers. Okay. Uh, and they said, don't tell anybody about this. I don't know you. You don't know me. But if anyone asks, we're just friends. <laughs> yeah, but we just got this huge palette. Of what kind of international pez. pieces he bring it over? Like, can I see an example of any of them? Um, actually, I don't know. That's a good question. Like, Let would me. you see one and go, "That's international"? You know, like what what pieces weren't available in the United States? I mean, it was all over the place. It was characters that it was characters that this Scott McWeeny guy just was like, "Oh yeah, this won't work in the U.S." Or it wasn't my idea, so we're not going to do this in the U.S. Okay, and I think a lot of them were not like licenses because like. Because I think Scott McWeeny was licensing stuff from like Disney and stuff. Sure. Trying to be like, oh, these are big characters that kids already know. Relevant. So they'll, yeah, they'll work. And these were just like these were just those like weird fun made weird characters. guys. Yeah. And Kay. he was like, he's like, no, we're not doing that in the States. Um, so it was the stuff that are weird. Um, here's a here's a good example. Um, this one is called um, Alpine Man with Mustache. Uh, its street value is one thousand twenty four dollars. Okay, um, and it is just like it's how much one thousand twenty four dollars. Oh, it's just a dude an alpine man with a mustache picture that you are probably close. It's currently for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for that. <laughs> how much <laughs> could we spend? <laughs> Tim. Oh gosh. Tim. <laughs> Support us on Patreon. <laughs> Pestrion. <laughs> Pestrion. That sounds like a country we made up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so just different items. Yeah, they were just. You and know. he was like, the the Americans are gonna hate this. Yeah, American kids, they don't know what this is. It's not. It's just what a fun character that sure. you just made up. Um, and so give it a movie first. So the reason why this relationship worked allegedly was because Pez Global wanted to sell their stuff in the U.S., but Pez U.S. was being kind of a butthead about it, and so they couldn't. But Scott, he's being a true McWeeny about it. Yeah. So the reason this relationship worked allegedly is because uh, Steve was showing up to Pez Global, and Pez Global wanted to sell their stuff in the U.S. But Scott McWeeny was being a butthead. Like he was like, "No, it's not my idea." So we're so not. So is he suck. giving a commission back to them? Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, no. Allegedly, he was just buying the stuff outright and wholesaling, like wholesale, and then going back and selling it in the U.S. He was doing what? He was buying it wholesale. Okay, and then selling in the U.S. Get out of here. <laughs> you just don't know how to say a lot of words sometimes. It's Maybe fine. You don't know how to say a lot of words sometimes. It's fine. <laughs> That's when you know I got it right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like when I got him good. When I go, what was it? And he goes, <laughs> go back and listen to it. He didn't say it right, <laughs> so, and he knows it. <laughs> So, <laughs> what are you doing? The president, the president was being a butthead about it. Yeah, big, uh, big McWeeny. And, <laughs> and Global was like, "Yeah, we're whatever, we're doing fine. it. Fine, we're we're so they're this in one way or another to this guy. Yeah, and he is, and they're just like, this is the profit we can make on it. Yeah, and then he is, is, is he paying a pretty high markup on it? He's paying wholesale because they're printing them and they're sent, shipping them all over the place. So like he's getting wholesale cents? rates. Yeah, and he's getting a whole bunch of these. And he's going back selling going for a thousand dollars, selling them on the gray market. On the what? The gray market. 
It's a gray area. It's not black market items. It's not white market. It's gray. Okay. It's in a gray area. Um, but I mean, I guess technically black market because it's not licensed. But it, mm, nah, he's selling it. He's reselling as like a collector. It's sure. a it's a weird gray area, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so he's coming back to the U.S. and he's making fat profits on these. Yeah. So eventually he quits his job. He was a machinist. Um, he would just cut. He would be cuts. out on the street performing and. <laughs> Pretending to be a machine. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> Thanks, man. That was really good. Thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> can I open for you? Can I open for you? We should, do a, a, we should do a till and talent night. <laughs> Let's do a till and talent show. Can I open for you, please? Let me open and do that, but don't <laughs> it. <laughs> Ladies <just> and gentlemen, <laughs> Tim Stone. <laughs> just come out. <laughs> Bonus points if you get the headset mic a little too far in front of your mouth. Yeah, it's just it's like so you're peaking. Yeah, yeah you're just blowing on the microphone. And I just do it uncomfortably long, like 20 minutes. <laughs> That's how long it would take to get a gut roll. Twenty minutes is how long it would take to get a gut roll. I would say three, but you think you think that someone would sit through there for sixteen minutes and go, "This is fine." This is, it's the sort of thing where at that at that time frame, like at the at the beginning, it's got it's like, and you're like, ah, oh, this is pretty funny. At the beginning, you're like, oh, this goes, guy just walked up on stage. Yeah, all right, this isn't as funny anymore. And you're like, yeah, this was this was not a joke. This is his bit. And then it and then and then, it, and then it's kind of like, okay, this is still his bit. And then there's a moment in the middle where it gets kind of funny. Like again. It's kind of he's still doing he's this. Still this. <laughs> this is <laughs> wild crazy. commitment. Yeah. And then, then there's a point. At the there's end. a point where it falls off and it falls off hard. People start throwing stuff. They start yelling things at me. They set the building on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I never stop. The it's fire department shows me. up. You're just a crisp little robot in the middle there, forever memorialized. Cause the fire broke it. Yeah. <laughs> a SoundCloud rapper shows up and he starts rapping over the. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> quits his job. <laughs> quits his job. <laughs> he's done. He's like, I, life on the road's too tough as a machinist. <laughs> I gotta come home. I babe. gotta come up. <laughs> but first, I need to go to Europe. <laughs> first, I gotta go to Europe and buy a bunch of Pez <laughs> and buy a literal boatload of Pez. Um, How many is he buying each trip? Uh, at the height of his career, he went and he made a half a million dollar purchase on Pez. Um, and is coming back with literal boatloads of Pez um, and customs. Customs. Uh, the first time he comes back with like a pallet load of Pez, customs sees it. He's and got a like, pallet of Pez, <laughs> and now custom flags it. And custom says, "All right, we got him." I mean, you're not Pez, yeah. So you can't import this. And so they look at the paperwork and they check, and they're like, "Oh well, Pez never filed it." And they, <clears throat> I saw an interview with an, the actual customs agent, who the real one, who's like. This is sketchy. Yeah, and he checked and he said, "Well, if they're dumb enough not to file their paperwork, then come on in." And so <laughs> that's that's exactly what he said. And I so like this guy. Just let him import the Pez, and he built this operation. He started doing these like. Where does he keep them? He's Where's got he a, got a warehouse? warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I actually have a picture of his warehouse. He does. Have Here's a, Pez a picture palace. of his Pez warehouse, and like, literal pallet loads of Pez. These are all Pezes. This is just some random picture of a warehouse. I'm kidding. No, this is actually from his blog. Um, wow, so he's got a blog. He has a Pez blog. Um, <laughs> okay, um, and so he he's running this this sophisticated operation. Sure, he's going to these Pez yeah, fan you, it's conferences. So, this is so risky because I mean, at any point, it's over. <clears throat> so he's going to these Pez fan conferences. Yeah, okay. Uh, he's going to these Pez fan conferences. He's selling all these these rare Pezes at these conferences. Um, and making a lot of money, making a killing selling these. Yeah. Uh, so he gets an invite to go to like an official Pez conference to sell at the the PezCon. Um, and they're like, "What? That feels like a trap." Yeah. Here, <laughs> here's what he does. Is he the clown? He's the guy on the left. <laughs> no, he's the bearded guy. Uh, this is like his booth that he would set up at 
at conferences. Um, he's a for those for audio listeners. He looks like um, he looks like he would set up a marathon. Looks in like Tennessee. a middle school janitor. <laughs> <laughs> Long beard, <laughs> big glasses. <laughs> he looks like that guy who's you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he looks like the middle school janitor who's been saying he's going to retire cool. next year for like 13 yeah. years. You're the guy. The, the, have I told you about the janitor in my middle school? No. Who had a comic book collection worth like a lot of money? Yeah, yeah. So no. I mean, kind of. So I mean, his, his name was Robert. Yeah. But he has like three copies of the first ever Spider-Man. That's kind of cool. Like he's. I mean, he, that's, that's his retirement plan. Is his comic, is book his comic collection. books? Seriously. Interesting. He's got a lot of them. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, he looks like a middle school janitor, big glasses, long beard, um, and next to him is a clown. Yeah, literal a full clown. Not, not like a clown of a person, but like clown, a clown, like a clown, like a clown of a clown, like a happy little clown. <laughs> like, yep, with a Pez hat. Yep. Um, and so he he gained some notoriety selling these aftermarket Pezes. Sure. Um, or these, I guess, gray market Pezes. Yeah. Um, and. It's making bank doing it, making absolute bank, making these trips over to Europe, getting some stuff from the the dispensaries. I like that and he's it's rich and looks like that. You know, <laughs> that makes me feel great. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like it, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Uh, speaking of future episodes, we have a ton of past episodes. Uh, we have a back catalog of well over a hundred episodes. Uh, so check those out. My current favorite is Nellie Bly. She was a journalist from the early 1900s who totally changed the industry, especially for women in the industry. Super cool story, but also kind of crazy. Uh, some of the things that she did. Uh, we had a lot of fun in that episode, so check that out. Uh, don't for, forget to subscribe, but ultimately just thanks for being here. And he's not he's not it's not clear. Uh, again, it's it, he claims that he's getting all these straight from global corporate Okay. global corporate maintains that he must have had known someone at the factory that was sneaking him out of the factory sneaking out sneaking pallets <laughs> for him at the factory. Yeah, we checked the security camera footage. We found nothing. Yeah, we could have found someone anything. moving pallets. Here's the thing about how the, the corporate structure of the company worked though. Um, Pez America was really just the corporate engine. They didn't manufacture these in America. They still use the same manufacturing arm of Pez Global. So every time they had their licensed stuff, they would send it off to Pez Global and be like, here's our stuff. And they'd print them and then ship them back to the US and then be like, okay, now you're ready to sell your stuff. Um, and the president, remember McWeeny? Um, <laughs> <laughs> he had a passion project. Um, a, yeah. His own little Pez character he was designing. And he had been working on it for years, prototyping this thing, getting prototypes made, shipping them off to Pez Global to get these prototypes printed and sent over and then testing and then keeps iterating on this, right? Um, okay. Somehow. It looks just like. <coughs> <laughs> somehow, uh, uh, Glue gets his hands on these prototypes. Okay. And he brings them back to the states, and he starts selling them. And he's got them at his like conference booths. And he shows up to this conference, and Steve Glue <laughs> has his. He literally goes to McWeeny, and he goes, "This one's you." <laughs> <laughs> he does the thing to McWeeny. <laughs> so these are these are some prototypes. Of the character that this he was is what McWeeny was giving his life to <laughs> was a hot topic cabbie. Yeah. Uh, these had a never Missy hit. B headliner. <laughs> these these had it's a uh, for those listening. It's a typical cartoon character face with huge ears and a round yeah. nose. Yeah, with pink hair. And a police hat and a police like a cabbie hat or police hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And McWeeny was like, I spent years prototyping <laughs> like this that. will crush in the States, but everything this else I said no yet. to, but this is what it's going to do, <laughs> uh, but th this had never hit market yet. Like he was still iterating on this idea. He was still testing. He's still it. working on it. Yeah, he was still working on He's it. Like the, 
the, the and the this sideburns guy, need to be a little longer. And now this guy is at his conference selling his product that he hadn't released yet, his secret passion product product project. I can't explain to you how much I hate that this was his secret. Like you have to <laughs> you have to look at the video version of this episode <laughs> or at least Google this to see what I'm talking about. Uh, that McWeenie <laughs> Devoted his life to these. Would then tear down Steve's Enterprise <laughs> over this character. He had another iteration that Steve also had got his hands on here. I'll pull this one in as well so you can see this other iteration of this character. Uh, it's the it's same <laughs> character with red hair, like normal red hair, not bright pink. Yeah. With a green bowl, <laughs> yeah, green on popcorn his head. bowl, <laughs> like the big bowl that you, when you're watching a movie, you at know home. the big bowl, yeah, you know that one, yeah, that big that one. only your mom was allowed to use, yeah, 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 yeah. you know. And yeah. if you used it, she'd be like, "What are you doing with my popcorn bowl?" Yeah, that's my. And popcorn you'd be like, bowl. "I'm just trying to eat some popcorn." And she's like, "That's my popcorn she'd bowl." She mix her ruffles you know, up that in there one, with her popcorn. The, yeah. yeah, sometimes M and M's. If it was a really good weekend, sure. If it was a good like, movie, M and M's and popcorn, mom. That's well, weird. yeah. And then you didn't realize how much of a genius she was. Yeah, then you tried. She didn't realize that she spent her whole life working on that project for you to diss it in front of the whole family like that. You're going to ruin Homeward Bound by being like, hey, M&M's and in the popcorn. What are you doing, mom? Why don't you get the M&M's and the popcorn separate? All right. And she's like, why don't you mind your own freaking business? Yeah, I will take this movie back to Blockbuster tonight. We won't even finish tonight. it. I will I'll watch it, it after you go to bed, you little brat. That's what she that's what my mom would yeah, do. Yeah, my yeah. mom would turn the volume up on a movie I wasn't allowed to watch <laughs> just so she would so I would know. No, she was watching it in the other room. Then I wanted to watch you it. You weren't a part was, of it. You're gonna hear it and you're gonna hear the spoilers at the end. Yeah, you're gonna know what happens. Like, mom, no. No, and you're in your bedroom crying so you know, much. So has that ever tears. happened to you? You're holding a bowl <laughs> you're holding a balloon. You're holding your pillow. You're holding two over. bowls that you got from the kitchen <laughs> got, over your ears. You got four pillows, the whole house. And is you know pillows. what's insane? Over you ears. know what's rude? Because what? I went to a Pez com- <laughs> conference, and there's a little character with two bowls on his ears, and I was like, "Who saw my that's childhood? Me. That's that's me. me. <laughs> this is my life project." So anyway, he's got a bowl on his head. I can't believe that that's what McWeenie gave his life to. So McWeenie was furious. furious, and it became a personal vendetta for McWeenie to crush Steve Glue's gray market. Pez How industry. did you get these? Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, I made them. I designed them. I designed them. These are my designs. They're originals. <laughs> no, that's my design. Prove it. Prove it, glue. Oh wait, I'm glue. Prove it, we. <laughs> Prove it, McWinnie. That's. Pesca. Have you ever? You ever had a hot dog from McDonald's before? <laughs> <laughs> Just insult him to his face. Just a question. Uh, and so what McWeenie does McWeenie had the idea. He said, he said, okay, he said, you're going to, you're going to fight fire. We're going to fight fire. And so the oh next gosh. day I'm going to shoot off you. I'm going to shoot your boat. <laughs> <laughs> he sank a whole cargo ship. <laughs> only only one pallet and one container. Of the cargo ship was his. yeah, he didn't care. The rest of it was lazy boys because it was big in that era. Yeah, and not the couches. <laughs> There's so many lazy dudes on this boat. It's crazy. <laughs> they weren't doing anything. <laughs> lazy boys. It's time for you to see. Glug glug. <laughs> glug glug. Lazy boys. <laughs> they were just casualties in the Pez War, dude. <laughs> uh, so the next day, he ordered hundred thousand of these to be printed and shipped into the U.S. and was like, "We're selling them tomorrow." And so now this super rare Pez that was never hit the market didn't exist is now for sale for 18 cents at every grocery store in the United States. You see, he's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I have so many other designs. <laughs> I got so many other ideas. You know, you know, let me tell you about I got another idea. You want to hear my other idea? Here's I'm an entrepreneur, so it's, I've got other ideas. Do you want to hear it? Sure. <laughs> uh, so what Steve does is Steve, you know, uh, some people might say, oh, oh yeah, corporate Pez America's on to me. Like he the buys all is up. Like I can't do anymore. <laughs> he goes to every store in the country <laughs> and buys them all of them. <laughs> pushes them out into the Michigan and Lake Michigan and lights them on fire and salutes them as they've burned into the sea. <laughs> 
The cinematic <laughs> shot is just on Steve and the soft orange glow. Yeah. Right in his glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it image transitions and you just see Pezzas jumping over overboard, burning, trying to get out and survive. They make a weird <laughs> sound too when they're on fire. Like Oh, oh. <laughs> One of them was like <laughs> Okay. So how does how does Steve Glue respond? So Steve goes to his wife and Steve says, "Hey, We're sunk." <clears throat> Not <laughs> literally. Don't worry. <laughs> the boys are fine. He says he says he says, "Honey, I have to do this." Honey, it's wartime. And she he says he says, "But there's he said, "I, Steve Glue, I cannot do this." He says, "I have to take on I have to take on a persona. I have to take on a new me." And he says, so now I'm going to leave. I'm going to Europe, but it won't be me. Steve Glue staying in the States. The Pez outlaw is going to Europe. <laughs> so he takes on this persona. He no, calls himself the joking. Pez outlaw. 100% serious. He takes on his persona, the Pez outlaw, and he's like, it's all out war. It's pe- president versus Pez outlaw. Who's going to win? <laughs> And so he just keeps going overseas. The Pez outlaw. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. He keeps going overseas. And you trying. leave your wife and your kid for this. <laughs> he didn't leave her. He was just like he was just like I, I need you to let me do this. Like I have to pursue this. Um, if I came home <laughs> and my wife says, "Hey, remember that Queen thing I bought a couple of months ago? <laughs> Big expense." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't like you did that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're not going to like this. Then. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be worse than that. I think I think <laughs> I'm on the run. <laughs> you're like, what are you talking about? Has America's after me. Well, he's got a big 10 gallon hat and he's just like I've um, he's like uh, I've passed hey, off the president. You uh, <laughs> you got any <laughs> You got any chocolate milk? <laughs> I'm the Pez outlaw, <laughs> and I'm in this town to get business done. It's the wild, wild Pez. So are here. you for me or are you against <laughs> me? Because there's only two options when it comes to the Pez man. <laughs> are you in, or do I got to dispense of you? <laughs> He has a gun. It's a pen dispenser, <laughs> but it's it's it oh, shoots. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, can we get custom Pez dispensers? I think I you think can. they make them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they they will. Yeah. They don't make our ideas without us putting our ideas out there, though. What? What did you say? I was like, can we get custom ones? And you're like, I think they make them. They don't make them already. We had to customize them. Oh. Um, yeah, they he did have um, he did have these. You, you you joke, but where'd it go? The <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, you know what's wild? <laughs> I swear it's just candy. Shouldn't you be in school right <laughs> now? These are banned <laughs> in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It scared the cops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These <laughs> these kill people. Um, <laughs> so I, he he starts going. He's over. got them in holsters. <laughs> <It's> just. <laughs> He's just. <laughs> Okay, so he's on. Is he on the run? Like he's not in legal trouble yet. Not. It's it's a gray area. Okay. Pez America is not pursuing a legal road. What they're pursuing is their yeah, they're, a vengeance. They're, they're a, not yeah, going. Yeah, we're shutting. They're not down. going for the law. They're going yeah, for. They're going for total the, destruction. Yeah. Um, and so he continues his operation. He's going overseas. He's shipping stuff back. And Pez America is watching what he's doing. And they are attempting. Every time he brings something in, they're like, "We're gonna sell that." 
And so then they buy it and they start selling it and they flood the market with whatever he's buying. And so they they're trying to keep a close eye on what he's bringing in and what's rare in the US. Okay. And they're like, we're going to make it not rare. And so <clears throat> pretty much every decision that they're making after this of what Pez dispensers are going to be big in the US or just what did this guy bring in <laughs> and try to sell. Uh, and it starts to kind of get out that Steve is selling it. Law. Steve is selling it. So it's about to get pretty big like in the it's not going to be as rare because Steve's got it because they're trying to take him down. Um, and so after the Which kind of does start to tank his business after a vicious cycle of this, he kind of hangs up the hat because he, he thought he could take them. He thought he could could keep up with them, but they're Pez, but they're Pez man. You can't you can't, you can't take, take on, take on, on the man. On, yeah, uh, and so he starts to hang up his hat and uh, he kind of has a moment where he realizes you know what like I could go legit. <laughs> I could I'll, I could compete. I don't have to be a bad guy. Like I could go legit. And so he goes and he takes out a two hundred fifty thousand dollar line of credit and he had two hundred fifty thousand dollars of cash that he had been saving up from all this that he had been selling. From peasant. And he goes and he goes and goes legit, gets his own designs, gets them legally covered, gets them completely legitimate, sends them off to Pez Global, prints them all, and these are legitimate, his own Product. He's got his own line. Yeah, and what he's doing that was pretty clever. He's only is, doing a couple. Well, yeah, he's not doing a ton of everyone, but he's also taking already popular ones and he's changing things about them. <laughs> <laughs> so he's adding different color variations of other ones. He's adding different hats or different items to them that they didn't have before. So these are his bases. designs. So yeah, these are his designs that Which are is all just Dumbo variations and like Disney, but characters. it's not Dumbo. It's not Dumbo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's Rumbo. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> and so he takes he takes these to market and they start selling really well because they're designer brand Pez's from the Pez Outlaw. Oh, you have a Steve Glue? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're Outlaw. You have an Outlaw? What is this? Gucci? And uh, <laughs> so same thing. He sells these. He is starting to make good money. He's doing it legitimately. And then Pez America's like, we're going to sell them. Pez copies them, crushes them. Okay. And then finally, that was the moment after that one where he tried to do things legitimate, where he kind of said, you know what? Like, I'm out. I'm out. I can't keep fighting you guys on this and trying to go back and forth like this. You guys are just killing my mental health, taking a toll in my marriage. <laughs> yeah, you're just, you're just. I'm I'm an empty Pez dispenser. <laughs> I'm out. There's it's just dispense, dispense, dispense. When sure. am I gonna get spensed? <laughs> <laughs> Respensed. How am I supposed to get spensed up? Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so he he, he hangs it up, um, but five years after the fact, he realizes, oh hey, I think I got a story here. He yeah, says, I think the Pez Outlaw can still win, and so he starts a blog, and he tells his story. Okay, and he goes through all the tales, and he writes blog posts, and he releases images of his. These images look like freaking police lineups of like contraband that were captured. So yeah, he's, he's releasing all these images of the things that he's found, telling his stories, writes sure. a book, and then yeah. he gets a Netflix. No, he gets a Netflix documentary made about him that came out earlier this year called The Pez Outlaw. And it's in his honor, and it's very good. It's worth a watch, um, and it tells his story. Uh, and here he is now. Oh wow, he's law. cool though. Yeah. He, is, he looks like a cool old man. Yeah, he is really cool. Um, he looks like a Portland Santa Claus, and he is still campaigning in the Pez community. He uh, says his shirt says Pez Outlaw for President 2024. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I hope he runs like legitimately. He seems to have good policy. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, McWeeny ended up stepping down eventually and got replaced, and uh, Pez left this chapter behind them. Um, but the Pez Outlaw is still out here writing his blog posts and doing things in the Pez community and helping grow the hobby. Um, and make a name for, for Pez. Pez. Um, all told, though, 
um, over the course of his 10 years doing this. Uh, he made $4.5 million in revenue uh, and his biggest haul, single haul was that $500,000 haul of Pez that he brought in that he purchased. Wow. Um, he never he never got sued or anything, so he didn't lose that money. Well, I mean, he lost that investment. He lost the investment in when he went legit. He invested a lot of money producing that sure. stuff. Sure. So he lost that investment, but he didn't. He didn't lose. Sued. Yeah, he didn't have any legal. Good for um, him, man. Yeah. So this is the Pez outlaw, my new hero. <laughs> this is who you look up to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, because here's the deal. You got to think. He designed this. <laughs> Not this. <laughs> I could look up to this guy. <laughs> That's true. This guy, he's in the most corporate office looking thing I've ever seen in my life, too. I love the idea that he got a marketing intern to come in and help him set all these up. Yeah, and then this he was, took like and 20 then minutes, like, I bet. Pretty harsh flash lighting, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't have any actual lighting. He said, You got the flash? And yeah. And he's like, I should be holding some, shouldn't I? Is is Pez is still in business though? Yeah, Pez is still around. I haven't seen a Pez in a long time though. Have huh. you seen a Pez recently? No. Have you seen a Pez recently? Huh. Where are the Pez? Well, <laughs> I know when you get two of them close to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going with this? You can like, and it'll it'll catch it in the other one. Oh, you that's kind of throw cool. them back and forth. That's kind of cool. And uh, if you do that too much, they really like when you walk away, like they come to life. Yeah, and they start. Well, to if like, you do that too much, it turns into a particle accelerator. And it'll recreate the Big Bang. <laughs> that's actually, and that's my theology. <laughs> that's how we, we got from. here. <laughs> Steve Glue is my <laughs> light. <laughs> Steve Glue is our dispenser. He dispensed anyway. us. All right. Hey, Malisha, say it with us. Fiddle, Fiddle off. off. <laughs>Hey, thanks for watching this episode. If you liked it, here's another one you can check out. And then down here is a bunch of other episodes you can watch. So make sure you click on that to watch forever. Uh, and then you can subscribe if you haven't done that already. It makes sure you don't miss an episode. Uh, like this video, leave a comment, leave a review wherever you're watching. Uh, and then subscribe or follow on whatever social media platform you prefer. Uh, we will be there. <laughs>